fait de la téléphoner, Marson. On n'a rien tombé. T'as peur de moi <rire> Moi, quand je suis avec toi, j'ai pas peur. T'as des doigts de fait maintenant. Hello and welcome to our weekly film show. I'm joined by our film critic, Emma Jones. Hello. Hello. Hi. Thanks for being here. Now we're starting with a big family fantasy blockbuster, Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Amongst Thieves. Now, Emma, I know nothing <laughs> about the board game, but I still thoroughly enjoyed it. It's a great movie. And the good news is you could be a D&D &D obsessive or like me, you might only really know about Dungeons and Dragons because of watching the series Stranger Things where it's, it's constantly referenced. But either way, you can sit back and enjoy it. And it really, really is enjoyable. And I'd say far more, more so than the 2000 film adaptation of Dungeons and Dragons, which starred Jeremy Irons. Let's just say that that didn't age well. <laughs> so how would you describe this one? One for viewers. It's extremely fun, very entertaining, and it's directed uh, by a couple of directors, John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein, and they made 2018's Game Night, starring Jason Bateman, so they really know their way around a board game movie. And it stars Chris Pine as Edgin. He's ably supported by Michelle Rodriguez, there's Justice Smith from Jurassic World Dominion, and Sophia Lillis, who you should soon see also in Wes Anderson's Asteroid City. And they play a band of lovable rogues and adventurers um, who need to get hold of a relic in order to save Edgin's family. But of course, what's the betting that it's all going to go horribly wrong? And they also come up against a genuinely creepy villainess. I don't know what you thought, but I thought she was very creepy. Safina, she's a red wizard of Fae and she's played by British actress Daisy Head. Terrifying. Well, yeah. let's take a look. She's executing our people. This is unlike anything we've ever seen. What's trying to kill us this time? Pretty much everything. The magic is on a whole other level. We're outmatched. How are we gonna defeat them? I know what to do. I can ask corpses five questions and then they go back to being dead. Perlumon Tergatis. Maybe I'm not saying it right. I absolutely um, mm. love Chris Pine and Michelle Rodriguez yeah. and there's lots of famous faces. Yes, absolutely. There's some supporting performances also from Regé Jean Page of Bridgerton fame and still favourite, I think, to be the next James Bond. And also Hugh Grant. Now, Hugh Grant is phoning in his villain's <laughs> performance, basically, from Paddington 2, as when he was Phoenix Buchanan, as far as I'm concerned. But there are really good performances in this movie. I'd say some career best comedy coming from Chris Pine and Michelle Rodriguez in particular and they have a really quite touching buddy relationship. Plus, most of the never dull action actually falls on Michelle Rodriguez's shoulders. And Chris Pine has been speaking about uh, that, you know, elusive on-screen chemistry that he and Michelle, Michelle Rodriguez share. She's great. We had a lot of fun. I mean, we are, we're so different uh, in so many different ways. Uh, and to see that 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 difference on screen, I think it brings a bit a bit of pop to to the relationship. I loved working with her. She's such a professional and so just genuine and sweet. And um, and she's been doing it for so long. I really felt a real uh, camaraderie with her, just because we kind of started at the same time, and um, she's kind of been on an adventure as I, as of I. And so yeah, we had a we had a great fun. Aww. I know. I don't know about you, but I actually found the movie curiously touching as well as funny. I mean, that idea that a bunch of misfits find family together really works in this case. So all in all, you may not want to join the Hellfire Club off the back of this and other Stranger Things reference uh, to Dungeons and Dragons, but it's a really good family entertainment movie. It certainly is one to take the kids to. Yeah. Now, moving on to this week's big French language release, it's Les Amsers or Soulmates by Andrew Teshini, starring Benjamin Voisin and Naomi Merlon, as siblings with a secret in their past. Let's have a look at the movie. Rapport qualité prix, vous trouverez jamais mieux. Ça ne gêne pas que je vive ici avec David, hein? Ça te choque pas? John, John, pourquoi tu fais ça? Tu sais ce qui s'est passé entre Jeanne et moi? Tu veux comprendre quelque chose? Ça va prendre combien de temps avant qu'il arrive à se souvenir? 
Le cerveau, c'est une boîte noire. Quant aux souvenirs, tu sais, on les stoppe pas. On les réinvente tout le temps. On peut pas faire comme si tu t'avais pas existé avant. Puisque j'ai tout oublié. Ça revient au même, non Now, the director, mm. Andre Tashini, celebrated his 80th birthday um, last month. And what better way to celebrate yeah. than with a new film? Indeed, and it's his 24th feature film, in fact, I believe. Uh, and it's his first since 2019's Farewell to the Night, which starred Catherine Deneuve. And if you remember that one, that was a story of a grandson and grandmother reunited for a farewell visit. And this film also explores some of Teshine's favourite themes, which is basically what happens when worlds collide between two people. As you saw there in the trailer, it stars Naomi Merlin and Benjamin Voisin as two siblings. And uh, Naomi's character, Jeanne, has to care for David, her soldier brother, when he's badly injured in an explosion during his doing his job and he's extremely gravely injured but also he has amnesia he's lost his memory now that gives him a clean slate to rebuild his life but the question is really whether he should remember or he should try to forget the fact when it comes to his feelings for his sister they've not been fraternal in the past okay well incest is yeah. it's a difficult um, yeah. topic to deal with um, does Dashini succeed Mm. Firstly, just to say that this film is visually stunning and it really, really should be seen on, on the big screen. It is a beautiful film and Teshine is once again using the seasons and the landscapes really as another character in his movie. In this case, it's the Pyrenees. Of course, though, if you're, if you're going to watch this film, really you're going to have to suspend your moral judgments ab about it and, and get into the story. And if you choose to do so, you will be uh, ably supported by the performances in this film. So Naomi Merlin, well, She's just won a Best Supporting Actress César Award um, for The Innocents, and you know she's predictably wonderful in this. But this is Voisin's film. You know he's also won César Awards for his Promise, and he's really, really coming to into his own. He's he's both vulnerable and frustrated in this movie. It's it's a really, really brilliant performance. So I'd say all in all. It is a beautiful film. It's still not quite up to some of the key films that Teshine made in the 1990s, which made his reputation, but it really is worth a watch. OK, well, that's Soulmates or Les Amps, Sir, which is out mm. in France this week. On to another film I think that you're going to tell me um, is beautiful. An Irish yeah. film <laughs> called The Quiet Girl, which was nominated for Best International Feature at this year's Oscars. Yes, it is beautiful and it's quiet. It sneaks up on you. So Anne Cain Kuhn, sorry, mangled that Irish name of it, is a directorial feature debut from its Irish director. And he's also an Irish speaker, Colm Baride. And it wasn't it the first ever Irish language film nominated for an Oscar? Yes, and it's done extremely well. And what's really interesting about it, it's led to a massive resurgence in pride in the Irish language and a desire to, to re-explore it. Uh, so The Quiet Girl is based on a novella by uh, Claire Keegan. It's called Foster, and it's set in 1970s Ireland. So Kate, a young girl, is sent for the summer to stay with some distant relatives because her eternally pregnant mother and her drunk father can't really cope with her. So Sean and Eileen, those distant relatives, they've obviously had some loss in their past that becomes apparent to the audience before it does to Kate. And the question is, will they succeed in parenting this child when so many others have failed? OK, well, let's take a look. Colleen Kuhn and Colleen Kiernan. Tell she will make this God to your Incredible performances in there. You have to watch right to the final frame to get the full impact of the film. But just to say, The Quiet Girl has been a good old-fashioned word-of-mouth box office hit as well as critical success. OK, 
Okay, another one on the list. Well, finally this week, animation from Japan in the shape mm. of Suzumi by Makoto Shinkai, a teenage heroine who must save her country from a devastating earthquake. Mm. Emma, what did you think? Yeah, it's really classy, actually. Well, this director has been compared um, to a successor to Miyazaki himself. I'd say not quite, but with films such as 2016's Your Name, he's proved himself really adept at telling very engaging teenage stories um, set among fantastical and seismic events in Japan. And this film, Suzume, has also been a huge box office hit at home. Uh, Suzume is an orphan and she lives with her aunt and after a chance encounter with a handsome young stranger called Suta, she follows him and she accidentally opens a door to another world. Sounds a little bit like Alice in Wonderland. Yes, you're not the first to have said that. Uh, but this film is really based upon Japanese folklore rather than Lewis Carroll. So when Suzumi opens the door, she unleashes dark forces or a giant worm, really, that's threatening a devastating earthquake that's going to destroy Japan. And because Suta has been changed into a child's yellow chair for some reason, though that, that works really well, it's up to Suzumi to close those portals. Uh, so it's a very charming animation, but it does lurk with this menace and fear of real life climate change and earthquakes that have recently threatened Japan. OK, well, we're going to leave you with Suzumi Emma Jones. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. <laughs> いってらっしゃい。